Welcome to MJ Hobby Corner, everyone. MJ here. And uh, in this, the third video of the Ornithopter series, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the wings on the Ornithopter. Uh, a, lot, a few people expressed interest in that part of the build. And I also want to show the uh, finished Ornithopter. Okay, for, for uh, this is the one I started first. And this is the one that I'm actually molding this second fuselage after, okay? So we're going to have two of these. One of them is going to have a slightly different wing configuration. Now, I used uh, vulture wings to kind of model this one. Uh, but I'm going to show a few of the different hawk-like wings. And remember, ornithopters don't have to look like birds. They can actually be insect-like. So we can talk about insect wings in, in the future, if I make one of those. Uh, they can be bat-like, they can be dragon-like, I mean, whatever, whatever flying creature you want. They don't have to be birds, right? Even though that term really describes birds, ornithopter. But uh, they don't have to be birds. Now, one thing is missing here. I'm going to finish the landing gear uh, back here. I'm going to put some knobby things there. And this is an elf ornithopter so i thought the bird would be a good kind of theme now this does have landing gears here and it also has a ballista that's uh, i haven't finished that yet i gotta add some gems on it and that's going to be sort of the magical ballista underneath where it's going to fire the spells there'll be a wizard here and then um it does have landing gears so it can perch as a piece of terrain I just want it as a piece of terrain and then uh, if I want it as a game piece obviously I will make a stand for it and you know there you go I'm using printer paper uh, you can use any kind of material cardboard like the thin thick cardboard that you see in these kinds of uh, you know for like uh, devices and stuff that really thin cardstock you can use that you can use plastic card I've even used tin in the past from tin cans. Uh, the methods that I use for making those wings are a little bit different. But basically what I did to make the vulture wings is I folded my paper in half. And then I drew the one half of the wing and basically just cut it out. And when I do that, I get two wings, right? I get a whole wing here. And then the other side matches this side. So then what I do is I just cut it down the middle and I have two wing sections because this model requires two wing sections. Now, if I wanted to, I could just keep the wing whole, not cut it down the middle and that'll just and then mount it differently. So, you know, so that's another way of doing it. Um, but for these models, I chose to have my wings separate. Now, here I have three different silhouettes. You can go online and get a lot of inspira inspiration from actual uh, bird wings. And I use raptors because they're my favorite. And so this is a falcon wing. Here's the body. Now these are going to be big. These are not small wings. I made them pretty big. They can be made smaller. They don't have to be this big. Okay. So uh, this falcon wing should probably be a lot smaller. But I want to show it on the video. So, you know, I made it big. All right. So falcon. Then you have accipiter, which are like your small hawks uh, in our area, northeastern PA, your shark shin hawks and goshawks. They're all smaller hawks, so they have these like broader wings, right? Then buteo, which is your large hawks, like your red tail hawks and, and things like that in our region, okay? And they have uh, longer broad wings with very broad tails, so also I just like modeled the little feather tips here kind of after those those hawks, right? Now again, they don't have to be exactly like the different hawks. It doesn't really matter what kind of hawk you choose. You're just taking the shape of the wing in consideration, really. It doesn't matter if this is, you know, uh, large hawks and these are small hawks. That really doesn't matter for the build, okay? So I... um. I'm probably going to use the occipiter because I like the way these wings generally bend in. They have this sharp shoulder curve here. So I kind of like that. All right. And they're a little bit shorter, a little bit broader. So I think I'm going to use that middle one and I'll just save the other templates 
for another time. The most important part, because people sometimes ask me, well, why the printer paper? If you notice, I, I actually varnished this. So this is actually very like, it, it's like thicker now. I varnished it. You can also use Mod Podge. That's very important. Give it a coat of Mod Podge, uh, watered down glue with a little bit of paint. And, but I use this spray varnish. And basically what it does, instead of like, really warping because it has the skeleton the wing skeleton it actually creates these cells because the warp kind of it happens in between the the skeleton and so it, you can see the cells from above you know and i actually really like that and this this technique could be used on insect wings as that paper like kind of tightens up it will reveal the skeleton you know, um, down below. So the skeleton's very important. Um, I'm just going to cut this middle one out and go from there. Okay, so I have my uh, occipiter template here. And again, these are like small hawks and things like that. And we open it up. Okay, and we got this double wing. And now I can kind of match it to my... Um, body there okay so yeah, i like that that's pretty cool the paper idea i got that idea from the park flyers that i used to do i used to make uh aircraft park flyers and i was really into like rc aircraft a long time ago and uh, and basically it was balsa wood instead of this kind of wood but the wings would have a skeleton of balsa wood and then the skin would be tissue but you had a special chemical that you added to that tissue and it really like strengthened it. So I had, uh, it, it was weird, really. It made, it turned the tissue, it, it just felt differently when you touched it, right? It, it, it was really interesting. Um, but I got that idea and that's how I, why I started using the printer paper. All right. So let's uh, work on one of these wings. Okay, and let's see where what we can do. So for my beginning uh, of the skeleton, I'm going to use some 18 gauge uh, copper wire and this I buy at Walmart. I use this in my sculptures to make my armatures and they come in different gauges. These are for making necklaces, but uh, they're, they're cheap. And with this roll, I have a lot of uh, room for projects. So 18 gauge wire. Uh, and just kind of, I think this, this is what I was doing. Okay. So just kind of shape it to the leading edge since it has this nice curve here. Okay. And just kind of like that, just get the shape of the wing as much as possible. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to cut this now. And I want to leave some wire here because that wire is going to go attached to the fuselage. Okay, that's how I attach those wings. So let's do it. Okay, so my wire is cut and uh, I got to trim that a little bit. That's a little bit too long. Um, I can use that wire to actually attach it to the body when I'm ready to attach the wings. So once that wire is cut, I'm going to attach it to the wing with some glue. So let's do that. The first part of the wing skeleton is already put. I actually, I'm starting this, uh, this wing here. Okay. So, um, I glue the wire to one side and this is going to attach probably to the front of the cage and then go a little bit, uh, to the rear here. So, but first things first, we want to do the skeleton. Now I usually take the very end of the paper and I kind of fold it down into the wire and it makes a nice leading edge kind of strengthens that edge so that there's no uh paper sticking out of it now to get to this if I in other words if I leave that edge eventually it will like bend and you know so folding it in on itself like that right on the wire secures the wire but also prevents that kind of leading edge 
wear and tear that would happen if I don't do that, okay? For the shoulder, if I want the shoulder tucked in like that. Now, this thins the win wing out a little bit. I just cut a, a little section in the middle there so that I can continue the curve. Just kind of fold it inward. And there are many ways to make uh, wings. This I chose this because it was so much easier for me. Okay. So now, this is going to have... A bit of flexibility and over here it got a little bit wrinkled but that's okay all right so now both wings have the a wire okay and I'm gonna trim this wire a little bit and they both have sort of the concavity on the bottom there okay so uh, now let me just do one wing and I'll use that as an example for the sticks because now I'm gonna use my cocktail sticks for the skeleton so first things first, I'm going to take one cocktail stick and I'm not going to chop that fine end there and I'm going to do a cross piece uh, right. This is the shoulder of the wing. So from the shoulder down to this uh, area here to the opposite base of the wing. So I'm just going to do that by eye. And if you prefer to if you prefer to measure by all means, that will be a lot better. I'm kind of doing this very quickly. Okay. And that gives me the cross piece. So let's glue that. That experience with uh, aircraft was really good for the, because you really learn a lot about these skeletons, you know. The wing skeleton is a very interesting thing. Um, what I want to do is take a long piece, and this one I'm going to chop off this fine end and leave the tip sticking out. Now, I usually cut my uh, toothpick in an angle here, and that really helps. That angle will go on to the uh, stick that it's going to glue on, okay? And this does have some flexibility, so... Uh, but once I glue it on, the wing will straighten a little bit, and that's okay. So uh, next, I'm going to go down the line and just, like, follow the uh, feathers there, okay? So the tips of the feathers, and I'm going to do that now and then come back. All right, so I have all my little uh, beams going through the feathers, following the feathers um, of the, the wing, I put all these little cocktail sticks and then I skip one right down there okay and then the leading edge on the bottom is actually wire and it's one full wire going all the way down so that's the bottom part and this is the top part okay now if you don't want to see those cells then you could definitely do like a um, plastic card or a really thick card uh, so that you don't see the uh, the cells, but I tend to like it. All right, I'm going to finish the skeleton here as well. So let's add a couple more pieces of toothpick, and then that part of the wing is finished. All right, and so uh, just kind of look at how this wing is going to go approximately. Okay. All right, so this wing skeleton is, is pretty much finished, and this is the pattern that I chose. You know, here's a few sticks cut to size to fit in between there, a couple sticks there, a stick down here. And it feels really nice and stiff. Like, once this dries, it'll be very, very stiff. So, um, and then it'll just go into the fuselage, and these wires I will shape however needed, okay? So uh, let's just let this dry and I'll do the next wing and then the wings will be finished. All right, and next I'm going to stand it on my piece of foam and just let it dry. Okay, and here's uh, Julie's ornithopter uh, with a little bit of paint and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting there. And I'm going to be doing a lot more painting with this. And, and just wanted to show it with a little bit of paint. And there's the structure. Um, 
not a bad piece at all. So I'm going to finish this one. And one thing I want to show, um, if we look at a 172 scale figure, it's perfect for 172 scale. If I can find a wizard, all right, and uh, so perfect for 172 scale, or I can push it and do a 15 millimeter wizard, and so this would be a giant machine. <laughs> right in that sense so either way i'll go with either one doesn't matter but uh 172 scale seems to be a very good this is a big model it's not small by any means we can look at smaller models maybe in the future make some really smaller ornithopters and there's the uh ballista and i'm gonna have to add some gems to that and add some gems to the aircraft to uh symbolize you know magical stones uh this is an an a magical construct right so uh so far i've used it in my dragon rampant game i've used an ornithopter and made it the flying platform of a wizard and i think that's how i would use these and here is the other smaller one okay so it'll be cool we'll have a small fleet of small squadrons of flying machines going at each other with magic all right so this one uh, before i end this video i don't want to make this too long this video was dedicated to the wings and uh, of the of this uh next machine that i'm making here's the tail this is the shape and i'm doing uh like a, a an occipiter which is one of the small hawks and i'm kind of basing it on that but you can do it any way you want i mean you could add a dragon's tail and bird wings if you want i mean this is fantasy so you can let your imagination go whichever way you want now for the tails i i do the same thing i do with the wings except i glue this together okay so these are two halves right if i open it up but i just glue it together make a thicker structure and then uh make the frame out of sticks just like I did with uh, the first ornithopter, except this one has a nice fan shape to it, okay? And then uh, make the skeleton and then attach it to the back. And here is uh, an example of, okay? So I'm just going to try to give a sneak peek here at what's going on. So there's the uh, hawk like a goshawk or a sharpshin hawk or something like that, right? So it's going to be different from the first one. That's cool. Now for the body, I started making the body and the body. At this point, it's just, I, I cut some s very small pieces of stick to elevate that portion. And it's almost like making a little um, uh, cabin almost. Actually, that brings an idea of making some uh, fortified walls out of these sticks but anyway uh, and then I use a cross piece here to start uh, finishing up the cage where the wings are going to go where the, all of the gears are going to go and I'm just going to continue adding sticks and this is basically the structure that I'm using and of course the figure is going to go this one has a nice wide platform so who knows I may be able to fit a couple of figures so, uh, but right there, the figure goes there and I like to keep it like this so that I can remove the figure, put different figures, etc. Um, they probably wouldn't be standing, you know, they would probably be actually, actually sitting, but I'm using these almost as like aerial platforms for the magic users. So I just came up with the idea cause it's a lot more modular and I don't have to you know, specialize any of my figures. I don't have to cut them up or anything and, and make a sitting figure. You know, I could just put one of my figures on there and that's it. All right. So next we're going to sculpture the head and uh, it, probably one more video and that's going to be it. It's going to finish this uh, Ornithopter series. Okay. So there'll be four videos in these series so uh, look out in the description for the links to each of the videos 
and uh, I will have some cards as you saw uh, earlier and that will take you to the other videos too all right so there it is this particular ornithopter is almost finished this is uh two ornithopters uh for julie's elf armies so that she can pound me even more beat me even more <laughs> than usual uh with her ornithopters and i i will have some ornithopters that i make for myself that are not necessarily going to be avian we're going to look at other kinds of flying animals maybe even some lizardmen uh ornithopters shaped as pterodactyls that would be cool all right folks don't want to make this too long uh, have a good one and i hope that this one this video on the wings of the ornithopter uh was useful okay uh, i will have other videos in the sh in the future looking at other materials all right have a good one folks Thank you.